a small town in Uttarakhand saw an exodus of Muslim families in June 2023. Two men became the centre of a massive communal campaign in Purola. They were accused of attempting to kidnap a 14-year-old Hindu girl. Local residents claimed this was love jihad. A year later, a court acquitted the accused in cases of kidnapping and sexual assault. But what came out is that the police tutored the minor Hindu girl to make incorrect statements. The bogey of love jihad is a tool the right wing often uses to polarize society. There's little evidence in law to prove the conspiracy that Muslim men run a planned campaign to trap, convert and marry women from other faiths to spread their religion. Let's take a look at how the Love Jihad bogey has been used politically. Love Jihad! Love Jihad! Love Jihad! Love Jihad! The anti-Love Jihad laws the BJP rule states have brought in and examine a couple of cases where Hindutva groups have claimed Love Jihad. Let me explain. This was an article in The Hindu on November 16, 2021. It said for Meerat's Love Jihad couple, three-year courtship ends in Nikah. The story had a happy ending, but it was a painful one. In 2014, 22-year-old Shalu had filed a complaint saying a group of Muslim men had abducted her and gang raped her. The case was that she'd become pregnant and was forced to abort. UP was on the boil following the hysterical media coverage of the case. Many, including a local cleric, were arrested. Years later, Shalu revealed that her father, who took 25,000 rupees from a BJP leader, concocted the story and she reunited with her lover. There are many examples like this. The more recent, of course, is the Purola one. In May 2023, rumours started spreading in Purola, a small town in Uttarakhand, about the alleged abduction of a minor Hindu girl by two men, Ubaid Khan and Jitinder Saini. The situation escalated quickly. And guess who added fuel to the fire? Journalists jumped in and started spreading stories about love jihad. Muslim residents faced attacks from Hindutva groups. There were even posters plastered across town threatening Muslim shopkeepers, telling them to leave or face violence. Around 42 Muslim families fled the town overnight. Although the police arrested the two men shortly after, the case took a surprising turn. On July 18, 2024, a local court in Uttarakhand acquitted both men. The investigation revealed that the incident was part of a larger agenda to incite communal tension. The court's judgment has brought up serious questions about the police's involvement in fueling hysteria against the Muslim community. During the trial, the 14-year-old girl revealed that the police had coached her to accuse the two men of trying to abduct her. The girl's family also said that local journalists and Hindutva groups had urged them to accuse the two men of love jihad. The court also found inconsistencies in the testimony of the only eyewitness, Ashish Chunar, who is a member of the RSS. Now, the Muslim residents who had fled have started returning to Purula. But the incident once again exposed the love jihad bogey and the role of Hindutva groups, the media and police in stoking communal violence and the dire consequences it has for the Muslim community. If one goes by what Hindutva groups claim, then every day there are forced interfaith marriages or love jihad. In their book, Love Jihad and Other Fictions, this is the book, by the way, and I highly recommend that you read it. Supriya Sharma, Srinivasan Jain and Mariam Alvi note that interfaith marriages are pretty rare in India. Only 2.6% of marriages involve partners from different religions. They also say that in September 2020, VHP launched a special edition of the magazine focused on love jihad. But when asked for proof, VHP leader Kumar didn't have any, but pointed to magazine issues which listed 147 love jihad cases. It turned out that the VHP's list was just a collection of media reports and nearly half of these entries were flawed. Either dead links, duplicates, irrelevant to India, or just opinions on the topic. And the other half were cases where gender-related violence have been labelled as love jihad. 
In fact, such numbers are often rattled off by Hindutva groups. A few months ago, we spoke to an ABVP leader in Karnataka. He said that 60 women were killed in 2020 for love jihad. This is a very clear thing because when you look at love jihad cases, when you closely observe, it all takes place when a woman fails to accept his love in the name of religion. She'll be murdered, she'll be threatened, she'll be butchered. The only thing she can escape is to convert to Islam. In 2023, according to one report, nearly 60 women have been killed in the name of religion. But we found that the list was put up by RSS magazine organizer. Again, it had murders from 2017 and simply listed all gender-based violence as love jihad. Have you ever wondered why the right wing, including the BJP, always invoked love jihad? Because this helps politicians create a sense of fear and urgency among Hindu voters. You know, the old Hindu Khatre Mehe narrative. But that's not all. Many BJP rule states have brought in legislations to curb love jihad. Old laws have been made stringent and new laws have been brought in. The Uttar Pradesh Prohibition of Unlawful Conversion of Religious Act 2020 mandates prior approval for religious conversions related to marriage. So does the Karnataka law. By the way, we've reported consistently on false and bogus claims of love jihad and other communal claims. We do this because even lawmakers use blatant lies to spread communal tensions. Check out our work on such issues on our website and support our work so we can continue calling out the bluff of those who want to divide us on the lines of religion for their own political gains. Scan this QR code and become a paid TNM subscriber. Anyway, the laws I was talking about allow family members to file complaints about any interfaith marriage claiming that a conversion was set to take place. The Karnataka law actually allows not just family but even distant relatives and colleagues to raise objections. Some laws say that any conversion with the intent of marriage is illegal, even if it's not coerced and is through consent. And if you think it's just a law to stop forced conversions, look at this example of how it was used to harass interfaith couples. Just a few days after the anti-love jihad ordinance was passed, Lucknow police stopped a wedding between Raina Gupta, a Hindu woman, and Muhammad Asif, a Muslim man. Both families supported the union and told the police there would be no conversions. But this made no difference to the police who actually shut down the ceremony. A similar law was enacted in Madhya Pradesh in March 2021. This law was called Madhya Pradesh Freedom of Religion Act. The Gujarat, Madhya Pradesh and Karnataka laws require 30 or 60 day notice to the district magistrate before conversion and if you don't, you could face severe penalties including imprisonment. The section of Gujarat law that allowed family members to complain was struck down by the High Court. Other than passing laws, the bogey of love jihad has allowed the BJP to position itself as a protector. Whose protector? Of Hindu religion and naive Hindu women. The BJP has used the love jihad bogey in election rallies so many times. Listen to this speech. This is the biggest thing love jihad and land jihad. Ke and this one. Why even the Prime Minister has chosen to perpetuate this. Kerala story is only one country in the world of the Atangabadiyos and Nithiyos. The Kerala story claims that thousands of Hindu and Christian women in Kerala are being tricked into relationships and then converted to Islam and then sent off to join ISIS. This movie even throws out a figure of 32,000 women being targeted in the so-called love jihad. But these claims are totally bogus. In 2016, around 25 people from Kerala were radicalized and they did join the ISIS. But there's no real evidence to back up the 32,000 number. Watch these two episodes of No Filter and Let Me Explain by Dhanya and Anna to know how dangerous this movie was. But the movie was promoted by even Prime Minister Modi. But here's the thing. 
the Modi government in 2020 had said that there's no definition of the term love jihad in law and that no such case of love jihad has been reported by any of the central agencies. Maybe the BJP leaders should once in a while listen to their own ministries. Many so-called love jihad cases have either turned out to be a consensual relationship between a Muslim man and a Hindu or a Christian woman, or violent crimes against women by Muslim men, with no conspiracy though to spread Islam. Look at this case, for example. In July 2021, a special investigation was ordered by the UP police into alleged cases of love jihad. Out of 14 cases they probed, eight turned out to be consensual relationships. In the six cases where a nikah took place, the police couldn't find any evidence to prove that the women were forcibly converted. In Kerala, Akhila Ashokan changed her name to Hadia after converting to Islam. She then married a Muslim man named Shafin Jahan in 2016. Her father claimed that she was brainwashed and forcibly converted, alleging that her marriage was part of a larger love jihad plot. The Kerala High Court annulled the marriage, but the Supreme Court later in 2018 ruled in favour of Hadia and her marriage. In this case, which had become the centre of so many love jihad campaigns, the Supreme Court said that Hadia is an adult who can make her own decisions, including who she wants to marry, and that her marriage to Shafin Jahan was completely her choice. In many other cases, the right wing uses the term love jihad to describe crimes against women by Muslim men, violent crimes that include rape, murder, abduction. But these have been established as gender related crimes and not some conspiracy to trap women and convert them. Remember the Shraddha Walker case from 2022? The horrifying murder of Shraddha by her boyfriend Afta where he reportedly dismembered her body and scattered the pieces around Delhi over several weeks. Or the case of Neha Hiremat murder in Hubli in April 2024 by her stalker Fayas. Again, it was a brutal crime against a woman and despite allegations, the investigation revealed no plan or conspiracy of love jihad. Now, there's no credible evidence supporting the idea that Muslim men are systematically using romantic relationships to convert Hindu women. Investigations into such claims often reveal they're based on isolated incidents or exaggerated reports. This conspiracy theory has stigmatized and criminalized personal choices of common citizens like you and me for political gains. It also insults individual choices and autonomy, particularly of women. The bottom line is that Hindu women are naive and gullible. We cannot be allowed to make judgments, even if it's about our own lives. So we need to be protected. And of course, it further targets the Muslim community. But unfortunately, even laws in love jihad have led to harassment through unwanted intrusions passed off as investigation. Do tell me what you think of all this. Do you think that this love jihad bogey is real? It's exaggerated, it's fabricated, or it is something that needs looking into? Write to me at pooja at the newsminute.com. And as always, don't forget to like and share this video and also subscribe to our YouTube channel.